Hey everyone, so we're fishing for brook trout today and uh, here in interior BC brook trout is one of our freshwater sport fish um, it's not native fish in British Columbia and these fish are actually raised at hatcheries and stocked um, on an annual basis in some of the lakes in the Thompson Nicola region so the fish are put into the lakes at, um, as earlings which is you know roughly around this big and um, after one one year, two years, they become one or two pounds or sometimes bigger, just because the amount of food um, they can find in these really productive lakes. Uh, normally, people fly fish for them. You can uh, fish for them under an indicator with chronometers. And today, we're going to do something a little different again. Uh, as you may have noticed, last year I, we put up a video of pole fishing for um, coarse fish, and I thought, well, why don't we try? pole fishing for brook trout today. So here we have a rather long pole. It's um, the length of this pole is actually um, I think it's around six or seven meters long and uh, there's actually three different lengths I can adjust it to. So it's long enough we, we're fishing about 10 feet of water not very deep and uh, what I got it's a nice little sensitive float um, hook rigged up and um, I'm just adding a couple of split shots on here and at the end of the split shot I got a little clone pattern that has been working the last two days while we're doing some fly fishing and I'm just gonna swing this out, drop it down and hopefully we'll catch a fish one more split shot So this is one of the coarse fishing float that they use in Europe. Um, it's a nice little uh, thing, sensitive one. Usually used for fish that um, bite fairly delicately, you know, like bream and carp, and, you know, smaller coarse fish. Uh, because brook trout tend to nibble instead of, you know, pulling the, the entire fly away like a rainbow trout. We need, I started to pull on the really sensitive float just to see what happens. Bite. No, nothing. You gotta be quick with these fish. They, as soon as they take it down, they tend to just hang on to it and don't grab it. You're going pretty fast. Whoa! Missed. Look at that pole bent. <laughs> oh, it might have been a foul hook actually. It's not really it's kind of sluggish. It's not really fighting that much. <laughs> yeah, that's a foul hook. That's why. That's why I was fighting like that. Oh well. The only times they, they go up and grab the swivel instead of the fly. And that's why you end up with the fly snagging onto the body. Let's see if we can get this one in. <laughs> Not too sure how we're gonna do this. Okay, so we had to pause the camera a little bit because the camera woman had to help me net the fish. I couldn't even do it myself with the pole this long. Uh, just not working out that much. Uh, so we net the fish. Fortunately, like I said, the fish is snagged and uh, any foul hook fish uh, you have to release. Uh, we we're gonna release um, this fish anyway. Um, okay, so 
hook came up pretty easily. And uh, I'll just show you the fish. Nice little brook trout. Okay, and just let it go. Ooh, that was quite a workout. We got the wind going, we got you know, fake fish pulling the pole down. Let's try to get another one. I'm thinking about putting on a strike indicator instead and instead of that float because I think these weights are keeping the fly kind of suspending too unnaturally maybe but uh, let's, let's take this off and put an indicator on and see what happens okay so we've taken the float off and uh, we've added the indicator onto the line and instead of putting little split shots on there, we just have a tiny little swivel um, on the line. So there's actually no weight um, to sink the fly right down. So the fly is actually gradually sinking down to the depth that we set. And hopefully with, with the fly suspending naturally like that, um, we'll get a fish. There's another one. Ugh, I don't think this one's very big. So it's somewhat manageable. Look at that pole. Uh, I think with brook trout is they really like to dive. They don't really jump, but love to dive down deeply and uh oh, okay. here we go <laughs> oh, good thing to have a net with me Elegantly, but got the job done. Yeah, I, with with a pole like this in such a confined space, I can't really lift it up, and and I'll just end up breaking the pole really. So that's that was grabbing the line was the only way I could do it. So we switched to the strike indicator, took the float off, took the weights off, and just let the uh, fly suspend naturally. And what do you know? Got a fish. There we go. And here's another brook trout. Not very big, about a pound. Okay, let's let it go. Here it goes. Well, that was pretty exciting. So we kind of realized you know, pole fishing for them is possible, but uh, there's a few little disadvantages. You know, things like if you put a float on, put some weights on, you don't get as many bites. And when you're fighting the fish, because the pole is so long, um, I couldn't really lift the fish closer, close enough to net it, as you can see before. But uh, nevertheless, it's still pretty fun, and uh, we'll definitely give this technique a try some other time. So for more information on fishing in British Columbia, please check out our website at www.fishingwithrat.com and uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel um, because we've got lots of videos coming up uh, in the near future. And leave a comment, uh, comment about this fishery, um, this type of fishing technique. Let me know what you think about it, um, what other problems you saw in the video. And uh, until next time, good luck fishing!